Hey fun fans, Nick Jr. here from Michigan again, and I am back for our second edition of our technical season updates for this year's game, Rapid React. Today we're going to be taking a look at team updates 2, 3, and 4 from the past about week and a half, and explaining to you all why they're important for your team to know and to prepare for for this upcoming season while in the middle of build season. Official gauges announced for cargo and, why they, and when they will be checked at events, some championship slots chains at uh, some local district championships, as well as some more updates on what single events are going to look like. And this is all coming up on this edition of FRC Updates Now. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Discover why Kettering University is the number one choice for many first students and schedule your tour at kettering.edu. And by Stryker Careers. Help create the next medical breakthrough in a fantastic internship or career when you visit careers.stryker.com. All right, so taking a look at Team Update 2, starting in the general section. Um, I know that this was discussed on Chief Delphi, but Automation Direct has generously uh, added the playing field 3D printed version. Uh, I know a lot of teams have really enjoyed it the past couple years, and I know that the... Um, person that was kind of controlling that with Automation Direct uh, noted that, you know, a lot of teams actually just didn't think they were using it. And once uh, some interest was shown on Chief Delphi, another one of our uh, great retailers in the FRC community um, went ahead and created that. So thank you again for that. Um, important note for the virtual kit of parts, some of the codes that were initially loaded for Tableau were corrupted. I know that there was a Chief Delphi post about that as well. Um, first is noted in this update that they have uh, re-released the codes and initial and testing uh, you know, indicates that they're now working. So please uh, ensure to take a look at that. Uh, section 5.7, uh, cargo is inflated to 3.5 PSI. I know that was noted in the manual, but they finally have listed um, when they are checked using this gauge at official events. So taking a look, this is the official gauge that first is saying when they're going to be checked or how are they going to be checked, and this is what it's going to be used. Unfortunately, this is now out of stock, but I'm assuming this company is actively working uh, to try and get that back in stock. So that's nice that FIRST has released uh, what they will actually be using at competitions. Uh, moving into the Section 7.1 robot restrictions, um, I know this was kind of a, a token that was in the Q&A. Uh, Section C has now been updated to uh, ensure that this extension has been created correctly uh, and how that works as well. Uh, section 7.4, looking at do not catch cargo, some grammar there fixed, uh, or some more clarification that could have been added. Um, section 8, game rules humans. Uh, this has been added and first added a statement saying first is committed to equity, diversity, and inclusion, as that's been pretty prevalent the past couple of years. Um, and as such, first makes reasonable accommodations for persons with disabilities that request accommodation. If a participant needs an accommodation for an event, please talk to your volunteer at the event or contact leadership before the event so they can ensure the accommodation is provided. So if you know somebody that may need an accommodation to attend one of our events, please contact uh, the local event coordinator, and I'm sure they'll be able to help you out there. Taking a look, uh, and then uh, going into section 9.3, budget constraints, just a couple grammar changes there, nothing too major. Um, and big note, 9.7, R701, there is a new um, image version out there, 2022 underscore V3.0. So please make sure that if you haven't already did that, please update the image um, on that. So go ahead and take a look at team update three. Um, a big note here, I know that there's been some discussion on uh, Chief Delphi looking at what, it, what it's kind of going to look like for um, clearance uh, above the field. So first it came out and said that teams can expect at least six feet of clearance above the surface of the field at the venues. So if you're planning to arc that shot into the high goal, note that you will have a minimum uh, of 16 feet available. But may be a good thing uh, to plan for your team to only have 16 feet, just in case that that is the minimum. You definitely don't want to plan for 17 or 18 and possibly get to one of your competitions and it's actually at 16 and that's going to affect uh, the arc of your shot so make sure and take a look at that as well um, and they also said that practice fields will at least have 10 feet for that so uh, a couple of deans list update uh, you know if you're within the greater northern regional and all minnesota regional events please take a look at that it's extremely important with those uh, interviews being removed to remote the, or moved to remote this year um, and this is kind of a big one that's really the highlight um, of this, as long as with the WPI lib update. But uh, FIRST has now said that, um, you know, the safety glasses rule and all that sort, but they've also find, they've added this section that's saying the only exception uh, to the safety glasses rule is that 
uh, if your team is in their first 10 minutes of their load-in and for the first 10 minutes pits are open each day of the event, as long as they're not working on the robot or setting up the pit. Um, personally, I think that this rule it may have been a step in the right direction, but I think could have been found a happy medium between it. Um, I know when I was a student on a team and uh, a freshman or whatnot, I was often forgetting safety glasses. And um, a lot of the times, at least in Michigan, the experience that I've had is if you're on a team, they don't really let you check out the safety glasses that are there. So oftentimes it would be difficult. I'd have to go grab somebody to go get safety glasses for me that had them and then they come back to me. So I think that this isn't necessarily... Um, you know, this isn't a great thing. I think that uh, there could have been a happy medium found here. Um, but, you know, overall, I know that um, this might be slightly alarming. And if you're going to say this, then I would just say the pits are open for the first 10 minutes. But nobody in the entire pit is allowed to work on their robot um, until, say, 8.10. I know in, for Michigan districts, they open at 8 o'clock. And, you know, maybe we say the pits open at 8, but nobody can start working or doing anything until 8.10. Um, that might have been a solution there. But really big update here um, for your teams and making sure you do this. But um, there was a big WPI lib update, uh, you know, V2022.2.1. Um, and this version was fixing a significant bug with the joystick data locking up in the Java programs. Um, I know this has been a real pain. This has been a, a pain for a team that I was working with the past couple years, um, and they've had issues with it. So please, please, please make sure that all Java teams upgrade to this version, um, and so that way hopefully you won't have those joystick issues um, anymore. Uh, Looking at driver station LED strings, driver station light strings may remain active if tally op ends and turn off five seconds later to indicate the time frame uh, described in that section um, for point values. So um, it'll be similar to the past couple years where they've had some sort of um, light indicator. So I know like for la or for 2020 when they were balanced, uh, the lights on the generator switch would flash after five seconds to know for the referees when to count. So um, that's another neat feature that FIRST is adding that'll hopefully help out our referees as well. So um, just kind of looking down here, nothing too crazy in between 6.41 and 11.6 or 11.7.6. Um, but you know, big one here, section 11.8.2 district championships. Uh, the Pacific Northwest District they actually added eight slots, so um, that's great for them, and hopefully that helps them out. So taking a look at our last update that we're going to be covering today, Team Update 4. And what this kind of is is, um, you know, a big one here is the first choice, uh, and I know that, you know, it doesn't directly defect anybody. So first noted here, first choice round two has ended, which ended this past week, and Anymark is starting to process the priority lists. Since round two opened up, three inventory discrepancies have been covered um, with the PSOC prototyping kits, duct tape in two different colors, and they were just some short, some parts, and Andy Mark stated that it didn't uh, exceed the demands for the priority list, so the changes have actually not impacted anybody's priority list, but moving forward, um, it'll be an issue. So, uh, single day event plan. Uh, they've added the inspection checklist and emphasis that inspection is required at the event itself. So if you haven't had a chance and you're attending a single day event, please make sure that you take a look at this plan that FIRST has posted. It's all right here. They've added the inspection checklist that is going to be taken a look here. Um, and I think that FIRST has done you know, the best possible job that they've been able to do with getting the single events. So the inspection checklist for the single events is out here. You can find that in Team Update 4 linked. So make sure if you are going to one of those events that you are able to um, ensure that you're prepared for that event at that certain time. So uh, moving to Section 5.3, the hub, uh, and how it directly relates to the agitator. The motors driving the agitator assemblies are supplied with a nominal 12 volt each. I'm pretty sure it's just a sim motor from what I've seen. Um, but the direction may vary from match to match. So important that first drop that in there as well. Um, and something I kind of hinted to in the intro here, so they, I know cargo has been stated that it's being inflated to 3.5 PSI. I showed you the gauge earlier, but they've added that it'll be plus or minus a half a PSI. So if you've, uh, if you're really, you know, if your shooter is really dependent on a certain pressure and it's really stuck to that 3.5 PSI, it might be important to blow your cargo up to 4 PSI and have one at 3 PSI as well and ensure that your shots are still getting those, uh, accuracy that you're happy with so it's important to prepare for anything that you might be seeing now that they've added this plus or minus half psi uh, they've also noted that the cargo are going to be checked every morning and lunch break and as outliers are as outliers are suspect suspected so 
every single morning and at every lunch break, the cargo are going to be checked, obviously with heat within the venue and stuff, um, air expands or, you know, not, or in closes. So that'll be important. I know in 2019, we had a lot of issues uh, with the cargo and being in different sizes and that, and they ended up getting it down pretty good once we got to the district state championship and the championship in that sense. So um, that's important that they've, uh, you know, listed that and that they're going to be doing their due diligence at the events. So, um, uh, I read this, uh, you know, section eight game rules, humans looking into some EDI from first. I read this section that they added, um, first has now added this box saying that accommodations are adjustments that allow all people with disabilities to access the building and participate in the game. Accommodations are determined reasonable given they do not create a unique hardship, um, or ca cause safety concerns. So, um, Overall, some pretty good updates from first. I know we've been waiting for a couple of these, and um, you know, as the Q and A um, is going to, you know, continue to go through its, um, you know, go through its time, uh, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of those and see how much, how impactful they are. I know the major impact ones are really added into the team updates. So, um, but yeah, if there, if there's anything that you thought that we or you, you thought that I should have taken a look at if there's um, some Q&A questions that you think that we should mention in our next video, please feel free to comment below. I'm always willing to hear from you guys. I know that there was a couple people that uh, referenced a couple things that I'd post in the last video, and I, I'm more than happy to start a discussion on it. That's, you know, kind of why I'm here. But ultimately, I'm here to, you know, ensure that you guys are able to get this information for your teams and really, you know, take that and pass it on to them so you can be more successful. So, you know, Comment below, tell us what you thought, and uh, until next time, thanks everybody. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.